In this episode, I'm going to share with you a list of 14 magic item archetypes. Huzzah! Hello everyone, my name is Aiden and this is AuthorQuest. Thank you so much for joining me as I talk to you about archetypes for magic items. I've said this before in AuthorQuest, but an archetype is a pattern or model of which all things of the same type are representations or copies. I won't go into too much detail into these sci-fi, fantasy, magic item archetypes, but I will cover the basics. And do note that, as always, this is not an exhaustive list. If you can think of anything that I did not mention in this video, feel free to mention it in the comment section below. Don't forget to hit subscribe so you can stay up to date on all future AuthorQuest content. Number 1. The Cure The Cure magic item archetype is a very scarce source of magic, in that it can only be used once. It's the magical answer to almost any problem, but once it's gone, it's gone. So make sure your characters have one for everyone, because if they don't, who knows what daunting consequences their caring author may bestow. Great examples of this are magic potions, computer spikes from Star Wars KOTOR, and even the magic flowers that grant immortal life in Disney's Jungle Cruise. Number two, the signature. The signature archetype is the magic item that is a specific character's signature. It only seems to work properly in the hands of this character or those who are bestowed the item as if the item itself has a will of its own. When you see the item, you think of the character and vice versa. Great examples of this are Luke Skywalker's lightsaber, Gandalf's staff, Thor's hammer, Serenity from Firefly, and even the Magic Treehouse from the Magic Treehouse series. Number three, the key. For every magic lock, there is a magic key. So if your characters ever hope to get into the Temple of Doom, the Treasure Room of the Knights Templar, or the encrypted lock in the Pacifier, they will need their magic key. Number four, the silver bullet. The silver bullet magic item archetype is the only way to kill a designated character, adversary, or problem. Whether it's a villain or a hero, an entire fantasy race, or even a space station with the power to destroy an entire planet, the silver bullet is the only way to bring their demise. It is often rare and provokes uncontrollable fear inside its potential victims. Great examples of this are Kryptonite from Superman, Vicky's Nanites from iRobot, and the Vorpal Sword from Alice in Wonderland. Because if it ain't Vorpal, it ain't dead. Number five, the Elemental Controller. The Elemental Controller is the magic item archetype that bestows the user minimal or extensive control over one or more elemental forces in nature. Whether it's control over time, water, emotions, luck, or perhaps everything. By its very nature, however, it is considered a limitation to your character, and here's why. If you separate them from the Elemental Controller, you can separate them from their power. Number six, the Linked. The linked magic item archetype is two objects that are causally linked across nearly limitless time and space. These can act as communication devices, portals, meters, keys, houses, or basically any object. Oftentimes, when one object of the magic item archetype is destroyed, its opposite is either rendered useless or broken completely. Number 7. The Conduit The Conduit magic item archetype is the item that channels power from the wielder into reality. Usually, the conduit itself is not magical and is basically inert when in the hands of a non-magical character. This is a great limitation to put on characters' magical abilities because, like the elemental controller, when the wielder is separated from the conduit, they are for the most part cut off from their abilities. Great examples of this are Gandalf's staff, Harry Potter's wand, and, again, Thor's hammer. Number 8. The Cursed The cursed item archetype is an object that curses, kills, or maims the character that interacts with it. Usually all it takes is a small touch and everything goes wrong. Oftentimes, the item latches itself onto the character and can't be shaken off until the curse is satiated. But this is not necessary. The curse works great during an inciting incident or as a consequence to the hero or villain down the line. The curse can grant great power, but at terrible cost. Great examples of this are the bracelet from The Mummy Returns, the necklace from Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince, and the medallions of Cortez from The Pirates of the Caribbean. Number 9, the Collection. Similar to the linked archetype, the Collection is made up of a group of objects that when wielded all at once become nearly unstoppable. Even two or three used together is a force to be reckoned with. And the Collection does not necessarily need to be a power or brute force, they can be simple. They could even be a key when put together, or otherwise they are useless unless you have every single one in the right place at the right time. Great examples of this are the Infinity Stones from Marvel's Avengers, the Millennium Items and Exodia from Yu-Gi-Oh!, the Ten Rings from the Mandarin from Marvel, 
and the temple medallions from The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. Number 10, the map. The map is the magic item archetype that makes what was once unknown, known, at least in terms of environments and locations. Whether it's the location of an entire planet made of treasure, or the way through an ancient sewer, or a star map that tells you the location of the ancient star forge, it makes the adventure possible. Oftentimes, it can only be read by one or a few people, which can add relevance to certain characters. The big advantage the map gives to a character is knowledge, often at the expense of others. But there is one thing the protagonist never wants. They never want the antagonist to have the map, which is your cue as the author to make sure that the antagonist either gets the map or coerces the map character into reading the map for the antagonist. Before I get on to 11 and onward, I'd like to encourage you to check out my brother's channel, Writing Quest. Leave him a comment, a like, and let him know I sent you. Number 11, the library. The library magic item archetype is similar to the map in that its core purpose and power is information to make what was once unknown, known. The main difference is the library archetype potentially has all the info any character could need, at least in terms of plot. There's often a cost and reading the library magic item is usually what makes it difficult to use. A common fun trick to use with this archetype is to make a certain bit of information unknown to the library, which creates greater gravity to the missing information. What could the all-knowing library possibly not know? Great examples of this are the codex from the immortal Nicholas Flamel series, the Dark Hold from Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, and even the computer on the Starship Enterprise. Number 12, the crown. The crown magic item archetype isn't necessarily a crown. Instead, it can be anything that makes the character royalty or gives authority over a dominion. What's important about the crown archetype is that usually it takes more than just holding the object to gain its power. It must be won through great trial, will, or fate, often at the expense of the last ruler. Great examples of this are Excalibur, the Spear from The Mummy Returns, and the Darksaber from The Mandalorian. Number 13, the Cornucopia. The Cornucopia is the magic item that gives a plenty. In essence, it is mobile resources. Whether it multiplies what it is given, or if it contains countless amounts of resources, it is rare and is sought by many because by its nature, whoever holds the Cornucopia becomes instantly wealthy. Great examples of this are the Sorcerer's Stone from Harry Potter, the Bag of Holding from Dungeons and Dragons, and Lord Blashmer's legendary mug from my brother and I's mythos. Number 14, the unsolvable puzzle. The unsolvable puzzle archetype is often rarely used by itself because when the puzzle is solved against all odds, it makes way for the secondary archetype. The unsolvable puzzle can become the crown, the key, the cornucopia, the map, the library, or any of the others. Often, the unsolvable puzzle can only be solved by one person, usually the protagonist. Great examples of this are the Millennium Puzzle from Yu-Gi-Oh! and the map from Treasure Planet. Magic items are a staple of the sci-fi fantasy genre. Whether it's Obi-Wan Kenobi's lightsaber, Iron Man's armor, or Gandalf's staff, they all fit into the category of magic item. Magic items are just an idea for a mechanic in a story. And frankly, ideas are cheap. Anybody can have an idea, but it takes an author to incorporate multiple ideas into a cohesive story. The best way to utilize these archetypes is to build a magic item with unlikely combinations of these archetypes. A few examples of this could be a silver bullet collection, the cursed elemental controller, the magic mirror cure, and my personal favorite, the kingmaker library. I think that's awesome. Get a library, become a king. You can also pair these magic item archetypes with other archetypes from my other videos. Imagine the library magic item archetype with the first of their kind race archetype with the monster is loose plotline archetype. That sounds like an amazing story. Layer after layer, you can keep making your story better and better. And it gets even deeper if you take your magic item archetype and you change it from being static to dynamic, meaning that it's different at the end than it was at the beginning of the story. You can do this. You are a writer. You can be an author. You can take these very manageable pieces, these very tactile, substantial, practical pieces and you can order them all together to create the story that you've always wanted to. Now, if you're interested in learning more about writing, more about storytelling, more about other archetypes that I've put together, check out this video right here. Very important. Say hi, click that like button. I'll see you next time. Huzzah on three, one, two, three.